We're arriving in Hvar, an island off the west coast of Croatia. Before coming here, I'd never heard of it. In recent times, it's become very popular with tourists. The main town on the island is also called Hvar, and today Rachel and I will visit. When I did my research, I found it had the best weather in the Med and the most sunshine. And believe it or not, attracts many famous millionaires and celebrities, including Steven Spielberg, Demi Moore, Beyonce, Clint Eastwood, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Bill Gates, and now Rachel. The combination of the blue sea, bobbing boats and ancient stone buildings takes the breath away. So what else is here? Some great sights and fascinating things to explore. And yes, we're going up there. Of all the places I've visited, this is one of my favorites. It's only a small place, but it was a wonderland with great views, a castle on the hill, and beautiful weather. I can assure you when Rachel and I discussed the cruise afterwards, the place we both wanted to visit again was Havar. The town is full of palm trees, medieval shuttered Dalmatian buildings which surround the harbour, and there's always activity here. I can imagine that before it was discovered, so to speak, it would have been even more attractive. Nowadays, the tourists are numerous. But it's crystal clear waters, ancient streets. Open air cafes still make it a magical place to visit. Hey, what do you think of this place? First impression. It's very nice. I could just sit here all day long. Watch, watch people go by. The 700 year old walls are still here. And many of the noble houses and buildings from the 15th to 17th centuries, though in many cases their purpose has been changed somewhat and they're now home to shops and restaurants. St. Stephen's Cathedral, however, still fulfills its purpose. St. Stephen's Square is the main square that originally was a cove. But it's time to ascend the hill. Our destination, the Fortica or Spaniola Fortress, which stands a hundred meters above the town. So we walk up through the main city gate and climb the stairs through the old part of the city as the bells of St. Stephen's ring out. Walking past ancient houses built in the 15th and 16th centuries where one gets the impression that it's changed very little during that time. The alleys dotted with plants that add to both the beauty 
and the aroma of the place. The walk thus being very enjoyable and actually not too taxing. After a few minutes we catch sight of the sea. After eight minutes we arrive at the Spaniola fortress at the entrance of flowering cactus. Beautiful. Then a stroll to the very top, the harbour below. The juxtapositioning of greenery, limestone walls and blue sea, very scenic. The fortress was built during Venetian rule at the beginning of the 16th century and reconstructed in 1579. Besides experiencing its exquisite architecture, there are also panoramic views of the city of Havar and the busy harbour below. The entrance fee is six dollars and once inside the castle there are plenty of things to do and enjoy. The views from the top are spectacular, though strangely for this most sunny area in the Med, it's clouded over. The castle is very well maintained and a pleasure to explore. Like many Croatian medieval castles, it occupies the site of an ancient Illyrian structure dating from before 500 BC. There's a cafe for a snack and a coffee. But the view is captivating. That's our cruise ship in the bay. The Pakleni Islands in the distance. This cloudy interlude lasted about an hour. Unfortunately, it was the hour we were up on top of the hill. The cannon's eye view showing how they gave protection. Impressive. There's even a gift shop with paintings, jewelry and handicrafts. The owner was delightful and we enjoyed a chat and Rachel did not resist the temptation to buy something. There's also a museum and many things to see. The views looking down over Havar and the Pakleni Islands are magnificent and both the pleasant walk up and the castle itself are very enjoyable. Though if the walk up is too much, one can also get a taxi to the very top. For the intrepid Rachel, the walk up and down is invigorating and we were soon back at sea level. No sooner than we arrived, the sun came out. I was even tempted to run back up to the top to get more shots, but the chance of a Croatian coffee overlooking the harbour was irresistible. Looking back, that was one of those very special moments in the whole trip. Sitting, having a coffee, and getting that glad-to-be-alive feeling. I even recorded it for posterity. Just having a very nice iced coffee with a beautiful view. That's the beautiful view. It really is an amazing place. Whilst here I learned that Havar has one of the earliest tourist boards in Europe. It was founded in 1868 with the purpose of providing good care for visitors. St. Stephen's Square, now almost deserted, basking in the afternoon sunshine. 
Seems like everybody is having a coffee. At this time of the day, perhaps at its most photogenic. The local people here were also engaging and I had many a chat. This is St. Stephen's Church in Havan. Do I say it right, Havan? Yeah, you say it really, really good. Oh. The supermarket where we bought water, a pizza restaurant. But the harbour is the centre of it all. An interesting fact is that the cultural life here increased with its prosperity. The theatre, right on the harbour, is the largest building in town. It's right next to where we had coffee, and it's one of the oldest surviving theatres in Europe, opened in 1612. That's only 13 years after Shakespeare built the Globe Theatre in London. Rachel wanted to say she'd been in the med, so here's proof. She'd actually just been soaked by a rogue wave. Raquel, did you enjoy yourself? Yes, I did, especially getting the refreshing... Uh, the refreshing flesh. water on your yes, leg. the unintended. Lara? Yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was really good. It was a bit more relaxing than the other days that we've had. So we wave a sad goodbye to this magical kingdom. It has indeed been a very memorable day 